Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as France, starting in 1920. France, I think, is a lovely Goldilocks country. It's not too big and it's not too small. It's not too advanced or behind in its technology. It has a decent sized empire that isn't too overwhelming, but not too trivial. So there are a lot of play possibilities in dealing with France. I'm going to be playing with a larger size. I could have played with super large, but there's a lot of admin, there's a lot of fleet wrangling to be done in a 1920 start to bring it together into a cohesive force. So I didn't want too many ships to, uh, to mess about with. I'm dealing with the Treaty of Versailles because well, my first degree is in history and then I couldn't not. Uh, I always play with varied tech because I don't want to necessarily know what the impact of any individual technology innovation is going to be. And with a random arms treaty because I like a bit of variation. The fleet that we've been given looks like this, and it's a classic display of lots of individual bits of classes with many, many different uh, speeds. Many of them are already obsolete and therefore costing additional maintenance that will either need to be got rid of or uh, refitted so that they don't cost so much. And really not much of a cohesive fighting force. Um, although this is better than usual. So this is the sixth fleet that I've generated to start this Let's Play series. The first four were terrible dogs dinners, predominated by, you know, pre-dreadnoughts and things like that. That I, I mean, if you like a challenge, there's a great challenge, but I wanted something a little bit easier uh, and more interesting to play with. Uh, my fifth fleet was excellent, and I did some really nice analysis on that, and then managed to forget to save it. So this is my sixth. This isn't as good as the fifth, but it's still pretty good, so I'm very happy to play with this. If we go back and have a look at the spread, you'll see that we've got 10 classes split all over the place, giving us 22 ships. Uh, with a range of speed from 18 to 26, that's actually a bit slow. Usually you'll get a 28 knotter or so. Guns ranging from 12 to 15, that's a bit better than usual. Usually the French are almost completely 12 inches. We're lucky that we have uh, a great class of battlecruiser, the Dussais, which have 13 inches. We're building a couple of 13 inches under local uh, in France, but we've also built two 15 inches abroad. There's no air of any sort. Um, you will be told on the beginning of January that you can build air bases for 20 and 40 strong and you need a CVL conversion for research to continue for shipboard stuff. So I'm going to get that underway straight away. I was building a seaplane tender, but it was so slow I've immediately scrapped it as useless and the treaty restriction came out as a meh 15,000 10 inch guns 14 years or until the next war, so let's call it three years. Looking down, I've analyzed each of the capital ship classes, plus I had a little toy with what a, a new max treaty ship would look like, just for comparison. But actually, let's start with that. So a heavy cruiser, nine inch guns, I could go to 10, but the balance of protection and gunfire worked in favor of nine and the penetrative power of a nine inch against a 10 inch gun is actually a really small difference. Uh, steaming ahead at 30 knots, 62,000. So that's the benchmark. It would cost you 62,000. If we were allowed battleships, they would cost something in the region of 115. So when you look at the prices for refit and rebuild, you need to bear that in mind. There are five classes of battleship, um, three similar. So the Richelieu, the Devastation and the Suffren are all 12 inch, nine ish inch belts and 21 knots. The Corbair and the Bouvet are much heavier with 12 inches of armor, only 20 uh, knot speed. The Corbet has 12 inches and the Bouvet ERR2 15 inches. Battle cruisers, five of this Doucet, 13 inch guns, eight inch armor, 26 knots. Two of this very disappointing Chanze, only 11 inch guns, 
only 7 inch armor and only 24 knots uh, it suffers as French ships often do with having a lower actual speed than its design speed so I think its design speed was 25 possibly 26 it's not uncommon for your actual speed to be a knot less sometimes it's two knots less and I've seen it three knots less hopefully with oil fired engines coming along that will be less common when you're looking to rebuild or refit your ships the crucial number is the weight remaining and as you can see some of these ships have really generous amounts of weight remaining sadly not our two strongest ships the Corbair's only 215 and the Bouvet only 175 where the nine inch armor 12 inch guns all have 700 plus the Doucet doesn't have a lot to play with on the Chansey even less that means that when you come to rebuild you will pay more a lot more for getting them up to any kind of decent uh, spec the small refits as I probably should call this rather than rebuild simply costs three four maybe sometimes five thousand for a battleship you improve the fire control you improve the heavy uh, AA and the light AA and it's pretty consistent the major rebuilds which take 12 months to 21 months depending these are the ones that cost a lot but cost a lot in relation to a heavy cruiser costing 62 and a new battleship costing 115 or so so how much speed you get really has a big influence so these Richelieu's I could take them up to 23 knots and that would cost 19,000 or I could boost them up to 25 knots for 31,000 I mean it's a lot of money but having a think about what shape of fleet you want is really important before you start to rush in and start to refit your ships the Corbairs stand out for being very expensive if you want to bring them up to 25 knots uh, and the Doucets also to take them up to 28 knots is very expensive however it might be worth it because one way of thinking about it is what total amount of investment am I prepared to make to shape my fleet into the fleet I want it to become rather than the dog dinner that it is right now I've listed out five choices here you could go cheap you could stick all your money into the battle cruisers you could stick all your money into the battleships you could try and do a balanced rebuild between the two and you could just go crazy and spend like there's no tomorrow remember a new heavy cruiser costs about 65,000 and a new battleship costs around about 115,000 in 1920 prices so even the max rebuild is the cost of five battleships ish you could be cheap you could just do the very minimum refit improve the fire control and improve the anti-aircraft armament it would cost you for all 17 ships 68,000 the cost of a heavy cruiser the advantage is you'd save money the disadvantage is you would be at best no better than anybody else and quite possibly start to become significantly worse particularly in terms of speed you could refit your battleships to the minimum but rebuild your battle cruisers to take them up to the kind of level where they could where they can become a viable escort for your new fast battleship carrier force to, to come 250,000 that's a pretty reasonable investment that's the five Doucets by the way the two uh, Chansies aren't capable I'm, I'm almost tempted either to scrap them or even downgrade them into heavy cruisers you could do a minimum refit on your battle cruisers and do a major rebuild on your 10 
battleships and bring everything up to 25 knots. Now, this is a very handy force. There won't be any other navy with a comparable speed. Um, and although eventually you'll be bypassed by 28, 30 knot uh, fast battleships in the 1940s, in the 1920s and most of the 1930s, this I think will be a very excellent fleet. You could do a balanced rebuild, build up your battle cruisers, build up your to, to 23 knots, not the full 25, which gives a significant saving um, of about 100,000, and rebuild your battle cruisers properly. So you get this 23, 28 knot fleet, or you could just splurge and spend everything you can and you'll get this 25, 28 knot fleet, which is very capable, but it's doubled the price of just this uh, Athelgoiser rebuild. They are all viable choices, except I think for being cheap. I just don't think that's worthwhile. For 17 battle cruisers and battleships that you can use actively in the 1920s and ideally have some sort of advantage over your opponent, each of these represents a pretty worthwhile investment. Obviously, the bigger numbers aren't just bigger numbers, they're also over a longer time because you can't just upgrade everything simultaneously. So whereas rebuilding the five Doucets and refitting the battleships can probably be done in a couple of years, doing the max rebuild might take you five years worth of sustained effort. This, I think, is the most difficult choice in the 1920 setup. It's a you know much more sophisticated choice than back in the 1900s when you just had your pre-dreadnoughts to tinker around with. This is about how will I shape my fleet going forward. And frankly, I'm torn. Um, any of the four are viable. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to plumb for the Battlecruiser rebuild. I'm going to underinvest in my battle line, just keep it plodding along. I might decide to rebuild my two 15 inch Bouvet class. At the moment, that's very, very expensive. Possibly later on, I will be able to spend similar amounts of money and get an even faster ship than I can get now. And it might be able to take those 15 inch guns to join in the fast battleship uh, force or not. Um, and 250 is a good sound investment. It leaves me money for the other problems with the fleet. Yes, I'm looking at you, Cruiser Force, and will give me a solid stepping stone in which to introduce new battleships that are going to be much more capable. I, I guess if my force wasn't full of 12-inch battleships, I might be more inclined to modify them, but I think the 12 inches need to be left behind. And the nice thing about the Doucet battle cruisers is that the 13 inch, yes, their protection is rubbish, but um, I think that's um, a sensible choice. They're all sensible choices, but that's the one I'm going to go with. So let's hop back over and go and deal with these Doucets because they are already obsolete. Let's do the minimum. So first of all, improve the fire control, increase the elevation, give them directors, take these three inch guns out of casemates and make them into dual purpose. Uh, perhaps increase the number slightly and then give us as many light AA as we can. Those are all the obvious things. Replace the machinery, go to coal, go from coal to oil. And as you can see, we're nearly 500 tons over. We can go to speed rather than normal, which, you know, does help a fair old bit. And we're going to have to compromise. We can either bring down our six inch guns to 10 and then cut down on these lights and 
improve our light anti-aircraft instead. Gives us 20 remaining. It's not as much as I'd love. Uh, like I'd love to tackle this uh, ammo thing. That's really bad. I'm going to take out the torpedoes. Gives us 73 to play with. I'm going to keep that uh, in order to um, have improvements in fire control and radar and that kind of thing when it comes along. It's going to cost 43,611 to build. It is a lot, but I expect these ships to be operating into the 1940s. Let's agree to that. That's all OK. If the speed had been 27 knots, um, it probably would have asked me to convert this to a battleship. Actually, let's just check that. Yeah. So there's a threshold there. And obviously at 27 knots, I wouldn't have to compromise the secondary armament and it could increase the AA armament. And it's, a, again, another interesting choice. The game is so full of interesting choices. I'm going to keep it as a um, battle cruiser because I want the battle generator not to put these ships into the battle line. I want them to continue to put these ships out into the scouting force. Let's click the A and yep. And then let's do the first of those. So that's taken us to um, nearly minus 5,000. So obviously we need to address our money before we go any further. I should just add that I've already taken one of the Colbert's and converted it to a carrier, which also cost a fair old chunk of money. 22,000, but is very worthwhile. Um, sadly, the coal bears are only 4, 14,500 tons. I would have liked it to be a little bit bigger, so I've only got 18 planes on it. But the point is not to really deploy uh, a viable aircraft carrier, it's to keep the research going. It's only 23 knots because of the hull form. Had I had a... Um, armored cruiser that was larger than 12,500 tons, I probably would have converted that rather than a pre-dreadnought battleship. Talking of pre-dreadnought battleships, I think it's time to say farewell to um, the Marengos and probably the Colbert's too. They are semi-dreadnoughts. They do have an upgrade path that would cost about 16,000, but honestly, no. <laughs> We've had nearly 20 years, well, 15 years of use out of them. It's time to let them go. And so farewell. I've never seen this one before. The experimental establishment suggests that the Colbert be expended for gunnery practice and damage assessment. What do I say? Well, that sounds like a good idea. If it gives us experience, uh, increased our knowledge of explosive shells. Well done. So, and 2,000 back in the kitty, and we're down to 3,700 in the red. Can all go to uh, reserve. We're not losing any crew quality. The Bouvets also into reserve. These will also go into reserve. In fact, these will mothball. They are all going to get properly rebuilt. And the Chansey. Now, they're a problem class. They're a big disappointment is what they are. They're only 15,400 tons, so only the size of a large heavy cruiser now. They are minus numbers for weight remaining. They're only 11 inch guns and only six broadside with a belt of seven inches. So ever so slightly more capable than um, a heavy cruiser. If we look at the penetration, I mean, 14 inches compared to 10, which is only 10 inches. It, it is a big lift. 
you do get a giant increase with an 11 inch gun. They should have been 25 knots, but they actually only achieved 24. If we replace their machinery uh, and went to oil, it would cost us 17,000. And hopefully we should achieve the 25 knots. And if we went to 26 knots, which would cost us 25,000, it would take us up to the same speed as the, um, the Doucets are now, but not the speed that the Doucets are going to be. They can never reach uh, 28 knots unless we uh, considerably downgrade their guns. But let's see what that's like. So if we take this down to 10 inches um, and go up to 28, we can just manage that. So uh, when you click OK, this is saying, oh, this looks like a heavy cruiser now. Obviously, we'd have to um, give them some sort of anti-aircraft protection. <laughs> still takes us down to uh, 100, minus 108. We could set the engine priority to speed. It gives us a bit more wiggle room. This is now costing 50,000. Well, you may say, well, what's the point? A whole new heavy cruiser costs 64,000. So just let it go. So tricky. Let's abandon that and bring it back up again. If we just click OK, it will make it into a battleship. So let's uh, increase the elevation, give ourselves director, do the case matey thing, dual dual purpose, give ourselves some light anti air. We're still seriously overweight, so we'd have to lose a six inch gun, and we're still overweight, so let's. Let's lose one of these uh, torpedoes either side. Takes us to 43. It only costs us 2,000. So, I mean, you know, that's, that, that is a big plus. So that's how I think about uh, what to do with the battle fleet. I'm now going to go off and do that and then show you quickly what I've done.